and welcome. I am Eric Miskell with EMS Now, and welcome to this uh, edition of EMS Now Up Close. Um, as many of you know, um, Vietnam is a uh, burgeoning location for contract manufacturing EMS industry after many years. And um, so we wanted to speak to somebody uh, with on the ground knowledge about that. So it's our my pleasure today to in, uh, introduce uh, Jung Tran. He's the Vice President and General Manager Industrial for Spartronics EMS. Um, and he also has responsibility kind of country manager for the Vietnamese facility uh, for Spartronics. So Jung, welcome. Thank you for taking time this morning uh, in Vietnam morning to, uh, to speak with me. Um, why don't you begin by telling us about yourself and Spartronics? Sure, Eric, thanks uh, for having me. Uh, in this sessions today. Um, yeah, I have uh, been with uh, Spartronics for uh, almost eight years now. Uh, expat locating uh, in Vietnam. I, I, you know, prior to Spartronic, I spent all of my uh, working life in Silicon Valley, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and you know, have uh, the experience to go into the, the dot com boom, you know, burst and then build cycle. So, yeah. really interesting. Uh, but that's exactly what we are experiencing in, you know, Vietnam as a region right now. I, I would say Vietnam is going through, you know, a similar dot-com boom uh, mm -hmm. phase at this time a as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, very exciting, uh, you know, a lot of growth. And uh, as you know, Vietnam is one of the fastest growing economies in the world in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. It's you know macroeconomic stability, uh, successful management of you know COVID and now inflation risk, mm -hmm. and commitment to sustainable development have positioned the country well, right? Uh, in the last several years, as well as you know for the future. Yeah, and now your personal background was on the OEM side, and then you came over to contract manufacturing. Is that correct? That that is correct. It's the you know, turn off event in terms of going to the other side and joining, you know, the exciting part of the uh, yeah. contract manufacturing. I, I, you know, in Silicon Valley, I, I spent all of my life, you know, from the OEM side. <laughs> so you came over to the dark side, as they say. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah I'm <laughs> dark Vader now. <laughs> yeah. So now, what what do you think is, as you're saying, Vietnam is a story now, uh, what, and it, it's been developing for years, but it's finally hit. What do you attribute that to? Is that the the the, the desire with uh, post COVID with the supply chain changes, people seeking a China plus one strategy? What do you think is behind all that? Yeah, it, it's all of the above, uh, pretty much, Eric. Right. So even you know before you know COVID pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. Vietnam already emerging, you know, in Southeast Asia as you know a, a very strong player in the contract market. Mm -hmm you know, uh, business. Mm -hmm. a, a couple of uh, factors, right? Number one is the uh, proximity to China yeah. as an ideal alternative uh, with the diversified supply chain. Yeah. Uh, and, and Vietnam, you know, lately has been developing, you know, lots of uh, local sources, uh, especially the, in the electromechanical, uh, you know, commodity, for example, like, you know, the sheet metal and the plastic, and then it's been very uh, competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as a result of that, uh, you, you see a lot of FDI, foreign direct investment mm -hmm. proportions, right, going to Vietnam. You, you, you see the Intel uh, coming in with, you know, uh, building the fab. You see even Lego in the entertainment business coming in to do a world-class Lego uh, manufacturing. You see the T1 EMS, like the Foxconn, uh, Jable, for example, coming in and, and have proximity in northern side of Vietnam to China. Yeah. So a lot of growth, a lot of uh, investment. And that is, you know, the result of the uh, stabilities of the government, right? The government has been very stable. Uh, the commitment uh, in the free trade, you know, areas with all of the, the, the countries, uh, their commitment, you know, on the infrastructures, you know, you see uh, the digitizations of, you know, the port, uh, you know, the infrastructures in terms of land transportations, as well as, you know, the uh, sea shipments and airport. Uh, so all of those investments coming in. 
to provide the infrastructures and, and support the growth coming up. Tell me where, and you just touched on that. So geographically speaking, is this benefiting certain regions within Vietnam? Is it more on the Northern piece around Ho Chi Minh City? Is it down uh, throughout the country or are there zones? How, how is it developing? Yeah, uh, pretty much Vietnam is divided into three regions, North, Middle and South. Right, so the, the the north, you know, due to the proximity with China, it's really easy. It just cross the borders, boom. Uh, you know, you set up a, a large EMS, and then you can move Apple product over, for example. Right, we Spartronics were in the south of, of Vietnam, where we address, you know, the tier two, tier three, high mix, you know, uh, high value, uh, low to mid volumes, uh, and 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 for that, you know, it, it's very good uh, location as well. And uh, the middle part of Vietnam is emerging as well, uh, you know, to complement for the north and the south. Okay. In, in a way, you know, Vietnam, if you look at Vietnam as a whole, it's pretty small. It's about the size of California. Mm hmm Yeah. And and thank you for that, because I when you look at it as a map, there are those distinct regions, right? And so yeah. I, I think of it sometimes in terms of like with Mexico, you have the border zones, but you also have kind of the interior that's evolved and those are in some ways different kind of uh, work being done in each of those areas, so. Right, um, right. The, the, the setup for electronics manufacturing is it, pretty much similar to, uh, you know, China or, or, or Mexico in, in Southeast Asia. So we, we organize by industrial zone. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we are inside, you know, uh, you know, Vietnam, Singapore uh, industrial zone right now. And it, it's a free trade zone. So materials parts, you know, we, you know, print in and then we build the product, we shipped out. It, it's, you know, it's uh, tax free, for example. Right. So that's one of the great benefits in terms of cost competitive for, you know, our customers uh, offshore. Okay. And you, you, you referenced it in your in your comments there, but with the 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 investment going on, how is the infrastructure in terms of the uh, like the electrical power and the communications and the uh, and 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 the transportation and logistics. Yep, it, it's ongoing. Uh, especially, uh, you know, the government it, it's very good in terms of uh, investing in in those infrastructures. When you talk about utilities, for example, um, you know, the 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 telecom segment has been pretty good with you know all of the uh, submarine connections, you know, internationally. Mm. Uh, you know, and my experience has been, you know, network just works here, right? It's like, you know, 10 years ago, you might see disruption, but but not anymore. It's very reliable. Uh, electricity is, uh, you know, better yet the government is, is believed in, you know, a green environment. So a lot of solar uh, power, you know, coming up, you know, to complement for existing uh, traditional electrical uh, system at this time. So, you know, the reliability of the power also has been really good and and you know the capacity you know the government has been investing in scaling with our growth here uh, very nicely okay and is the 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 kind of related or associated supply chain transitioning as well into the business parks and i'm thinking in terms of from distributors to pcb fabs and and the like is that developing as well Yes, definitely. If you look at, you know, the supply chain side, uh, you, you know, a couple of, of commodities, the electronic is pretty much international, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from, from Vietnam, we, we source, you know, internationally, mm -hmm. uh, Asia, Europe, and, and uh, U.S., depending on our uh, business segments, right? And we are providing, you know, electronics manufacturing design services for, for three segments in, in, in Vietnam. You know, one segment mm -hmm. is commercial aerospace, uh, and the second segment is, you know, uh, medical, uh, you know, for critical applications as well as for, you know, uh, in-home use application. And then the third uh, segment is industrial and commercial segment. So depending on the segments, you know, we source our electronics uh, pretty much internationally. Uh, the electromechanical, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we start to see very good, reliable, cost competitive source locally in Vietnam like, you know, the plastic housings, uh, the uh, sheet metals, you know, the uh, die cast, right? So you see a lot of emerging, you know, company locally here yeah. within the industrial part as well uh, to provide that kind of services. Okay. Now I know obviously the, the business is going there because it's also very cost competitive. So 
tell me about that. What are the drivers behind that, the, the cost competitiveness in Vietnam these days? Yeah, um, so, so Eric, I mean, a, a couple of things. I, I think, you know, people go to Vietnam and it's considered a low cost country, the key driver because it's low cost. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, how do we achieve low cost? I mean, I, I, I would say that it's not, you know, lowest price, but I, I would say lowest total cost of ownership. Okay. Uh, it's driven by, you know, number one, the uh, the lower labor cost. If you look at Vietnam, comparing with China and, and our neighbors in Southeast Asia, so Vietnam, you know, labor cost mm -hmm. is, you know, in the bottom 30%. So it's very competitive at this time. So even though the government, you know, raised the uh, minimum wage, you know, from year to year due to inflation, but it's still very manageable and very competitive. The uh, second factor, I would say that, you know, the workforce is it's really young workforce. It, it's a, a country that provides really young workforce who have, you know, a, a very good can-do and, and can-learn attitude. So the productivity is it's really high, right, for the, uh, you know, manufacturing segment. The, the skill set, it, it, it's, it's really good. People are willing to learn, get trained, and master their skills here. So I, I think productivity would be the second factor. Uh, I mentioned about, you know, uh, stable government, right? The, the government providing, uh, you know, stability in terms of policies. Uh, I mentioned about digitalizations, you know, earlier, you know, the, you know, it's really helped, you know, clearing, you know, custom paperwork, you know, in, in, in a fast you know, manner, right? So that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, another key things in terms of competitiveness is that the free trade agreements, Eric, right? So we have free trade agreement with pretty much, you know, everyone in the world, right? So that helps a lot. And uh, last but not least, I, I would say that, you know, the, uh, the IP protections, right? We are a US company residing in Vietnam. We still apply, you know, US, you know, IP protections, patent protections, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all of that. So those are the key, I would see elements to, you know, produce, you know, very cost competitive uh, yeah. products. <laughs> How is it, you know, when you talk about the staffing and, and the lower labor costs and the high productivity, um, with all the growth within the industry, are there any staffing challenges finding people to do the work? How is that these days? Yeah, the, the, the pool of resource, you, you look at, you know, two groups of, of resource, the indirect labors, uh, the number of, you know, universities producing, you know, new graduates on a yearly basis, I, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. We also see a number of, you know, expats like me returning back, you know, to mm -hmm. add values to the countries. So that pool of resource, I, I think it, it, it's very, very diversified, you know, in all areas, you know, you know, for us, you know, electronics manufacturing and you know, for hardware, for firmware, for software. I think it's very well routed there. Uh, the direct uh, labor uh, workforce, uh, I think it, it's also very rich. Uh, and it depends on the region, like, you know, where we are in Bin Yung uh, region today, we have between two and four million, you know, available direct labor workforce in our region, right? So it, it's close proximity and uh, they move from one industry to another, but for the like, you know, they have the garment industry and, and, and we're focusing on what we call high tech here industries from electronic manufacturing. Mm -hmm. and, and people uh, have high desire to, to cross, you know, the boundary and get trained and get into the high tech electronics <coughs> area. So, I, I, so far with my eight years here, uh, I have not seen any, uh, you know, challenge or shortage of, you know, the resource pool here in Vietnam. Okay, that's good to know. So, you know, it's interesting, you, you referenced the total cost of, of outsourcing there. And so it, it's lower total cost then if, I, if we compare that with US owned manufacturers who are moving over there. Um, tell me about that. What, what is kind of driving that from, from, from a US owned manufacturers moving to Vietnam? Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I think that the, the number one thing is, you know, <clears throat> if you move, electronic manufacturing from the US or from Europe, you know, to Vietnam, you know, you hit the crown and you, you know, materialize on the lower labor cost right away, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, the increased labor rates in the US is one of the challenges that we're facing nowadays. Mm -hmm. the, the great attrition, right? With the shortage of labor, especially in the electronics uh, manufacturing areas in, in the US at this time, 
you know, it's kind of diminished, right? I mean, you know, you look at ECAT layout, you look at, you know, southern skill, right? Basic skill, right? Uh, I mean, you know, for, for Vietnam, it, it, it's really high demand, but highly attractive, you know, <laughs> for the, the U.S., it's, you know, you know, those kind of talent is kind of diminished in, in my opinion. And you, you need yeah. to go back and retrain the, the new generation to do that. And it will take time. Uh, so those are the two key things. I, I think, you know, the, the, the third, you know, element is the, the care for the products that, you know, contribute to the quality of, of the product, right? The, the, the motor skill as well as, you know, the, the heart you know, that they, they put in uh, with the young generation that we have, yeah. uh, you know, contribute a lot to the consistent quality of the products that we produce and therefore, you know, result in, you know, the lowest total cost of ownership that I mentioned about. Yeah. And it, I'm, I'm assuming there's a fair amount of training required as you bring people into the facilities. I don't know if that's apprentice programs. How is that structured over there? Yes, definitely. I, training is key, uh, and ongoing training. Uh, better yet, it, it's it's you know the the, the way of, of getting the the skill shop the skill set shopping. Mm -hmm. You know, as we go, I mean, you know, our onboarding programs. It's normally you know two weeks for experienced even experienced people coming in. We have a two weeks you know uh, onboarding programs, starting first with you know our cultures and and you know the way that we do business. Uh, you know, customer focused. You know, and, and products so that we can connect the uh, operator to the products that they do. For example, we, mm -hmm. we do, uh, you know, flight controller for commercial aerospace, and they know that every time they board a plane, it's our products that, you know, that help the plane take off, for example, yeah. right? Uh, we're doing, you know, like uh, critical um, applications for medical heart, you know, surgery machines. So, mm -hmm. you know, the people there really connect to the products and, you know, they, they check out the products with care because they know the product will save people life, right? So I, I think, you know, the, the training, is, it's really not only on the motor skew, on the IPC standard, right? But also on the products and, and connect the operator to the product so that they can take care of the products. And then they start with the customer and they end with the customer back then. That makes sense. So tell me too about the kind of the value add, you know, if you go to Vietnam and, you're, and you do your manufacturing, what are kind of, the value add that you bring to, to the table there? For us, you know, very unique, like that, that, you know, our great value add is we always, you know, position as an integral part of our customer's team, right? So, you know, the customer focus on the core, they focus on the market, and we are part of the team to take mm -hmm. uh, contract manufacturing products. Mm -hmm. And the product, you know, working nonstop, you know, we ship to our customers, it's plug and play, you know, everybody sleep at night, you know, nicely, right? So I think that's a great value add. Um, as part of, you know, the customer team, our response time, you know, even though across an ocean, right, mm -hmm. from the U.S., uh, it, it, it's as if we, we, we are locally in, in the U.S., right? So, okay. uh, so that, that, that should be uh, really key. Uh, I mentioned about you know cost competitiveness, and I, I mean it right. We, we talked about the the international supply chain sourcing as well as leveraging the local supply chain sourcing to reduce cost, mm -hmm. right? And and the, the key thing is it's it's you know uh, our value add in terms of you know uh, designing you know test fixtures, uh, providing designed for manufacturability, designed for pushability, all of those factors, right, coming in that, you know, providing the value adds, you know, overall to uh, our customers. Okay. And I'd, I'd like to get a little more into you, what you have there. I, I see the image behind you there. The, I believe that's the new facility. Um, so tell us about uh, the new facility upgrades, the, the grand opening, you have some news happening over there. Right. This is, you know, great news. And, and this is truly a, a dream come true for us. I, I've been here, you know, for eight years and, and we've been, you know, lucky. And then we've been, you know, uh, to have our customer support and loyalties and we've been growing our customer base and, and you know, our growth rate has been tremendous. So Therefore, we have, you know, the need to move to a, a much larger site. Uh, so this site, 
truly is, you know, a, a world-class, uh, you know, facility, electronic manufacturing facility with a uh, role lead for green factory and building standard. As you can see in my background, we have, you know, 100% uh, solar, you know, power yes. for the side. Uh, and uh, this is actually, you know, for employees, it's a, a place to uh, live, work and play. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, so we, you know, we have all of the, the, the um, you know, uh, the items in the facilities, you know, we, we have not only the world-class manufacturing with the state of the art, you know, uh, electronics manufacturing equipment, uh, you know, to uh, provide services to our customers. Uh, for our employees, we, you know, uh, we have gyms, we have, uh, you know, basketball court, we have training centers. Uh, so all kinds of things that we have in here. It's a 200,000 square foot uh, production facilities with another 80,000 square foot of, you know, office and canteens and, uh, you know, gyms and facilities for our employees. Okay. How many employees will you have there? So uh, right now, uh, we are reaching around, you know, 400 uh, ish okay. employees and growing. Okay. And what happened to the other facility? Will that be retained or will that then be everything transferred up to this one? No, we, we will consolidate, you know, all of our products and resource, you know, people to this new facilities and then we'll uh, leave our current facilities to uh, our partner. We, we have a partner as part of our uh, private equity portfolios, you know, in Europe. And so we're going to, you know, pass our, you know, facilities to, to our okay. partner. Okay. And uh, so when is the the official grand opening? When does it all begin? Yeah, we're, we're all waiting for that day. I, right now, uh, October 19th, it's, you know, the, the target date, uh, we are, you know, doing the last minute, um, you know, uh, yeah. facility fit out right now. We're ready to go, just waiting for the government, you know, uh, fire and building permits, and then, you know, we'll, we'll okay. get up. And as you said before, that's in, in the, an actual business park surrounded with others too, right? So, I mean... Yeah, this uh, new site will be in the same city called Vinyung. It's about uh, 15 kilometer from our current site, right? So our current site is in the, uh, you know, Singapore, Vietnam, uh, in this report. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this will go to uh, another uh, business uh, part, uh, industrial part, but it's still in the same city. Okay, very good. <clears throat> What's well, exciting times for you over there? That's that's very good. Um, um, well, listen, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to speak to you, to learn more about what's happening in Vietnam. This has been very informative. I think our audience will appreciate that as well. And I hope to someday get a chance to come over and see the developments and see what's happening over there. Um, because it's, it's, it's an exciting time for Vietnam. Like I said at the beginning, there's, there's been hope and it started slowly for so many years. And now it's really over the last few years really ramped up in a significant way. Yeah, yes, indeed, Eric, and and you know, thanks for uh, your time and, and and today's sessions, and I I I I would like to validate what you said. I mean, it, it it's really uh, the the dot com and program boom for Vietnam as a country here, because I I was in the middle of the dot com boom in Silicon Valley back then, and mm -hmm. I can see the same thing or bigger now in Vietnam. So really exciting for the country. Yeah. It's really you know exciting for Spectronics growth, uh, and very looking forward to, to your visit. And I Good. hope to, uh, you know, uh, be onboarding uh, more international customers as, you know, we have the best solutions for offshoring uh, you know, from Vietnam at this time. Yeah, that's good to hear. Well, Young, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. Uh, I wish you great success with the grand opening next month. Yep. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, sir. Take good care.